Hi guys, welcome to the archive. So tables inside of terrain are kind of boring without anything on top of them, honestly. They're bland and kind of uninteresting. But when you put loads of little accessories on them and glue them down, you then have to make different tables for different rooms, which ends up giving you a box of tables that you use one of every so often, which isn't great either. I wasn't really happy about this, so I came up with an alternative that allows you to make your tables once, your accessories once, and then use them again and again and again in different combinations depending on which room you are putting the table in. Every accessory here is removable and some are even stackable and all of them are going to be compatible with some future furniture pieces that I've got planned as well. You can even use some pieces from videos I've already released like this little modular altar here um, using the shrine from the arched entrance video. As far as I'm concerned, this is awesome and lets me create exactly the scene that I'm looking for without having to create a ton of new tables every single time I go into a new place. I can make a few more accessories, probably reuse a couple of old ones, and save myself a lot of work. Before we get started, I just want to make a quick note about using balsa wood for furniture like this. Now, in my opinion, balsa wood is a superior crafting material for small furniture than, for example, XPS foam. Foam is great, I love foam, but it is very flimsy when you get it down to that thickness. And it kind of either forces you to make some thicker furniture, which looks out of scale and a bit weird, or end up with some very flimsy furniture that will just snap. Or you can try and reinforce it by putting things through it, but then that takes a long time compared to just using a different crafting material. Now, some people point out that balsa wood doesn't have that nice wood grain effect on it after it's painted, or at least it's dulled a bit by the paint, and they're kind of right. It is still there, but it's harder to dry brush up and make visible. What it does accept quite well, though, is the wire brush method that you would use on foam. It actually works even better on the wood, because, you know, wood, and the grain is already there. So here's an example of balsa wood that has been wire brushed, carved into, and a piece that is completely plain, so you can see the difference between them and see what I'm talking about. This side is painted without any extra weathering. You can see some grain, but it doesn't catch the dry brush perfectly sometimes. This side is wire brushed and has more detail, just like foam, but is still more durable. In my experience with it, balsa also stands up better to wire brushing than foam, which often tears and shreds, and doesn't always work as intended. Finally, this side has been wire brushed and then had lines drawn in with the back of an X-Acto knife, similar to the pencil technique on foam. While this does look good, it also is a lot of extra effort, so it kind of depends on the balance you want to find. All this goes to show is that you can absolutely use balsa wood instead of foam for builds like this and still get a really nice texture. For this build, I tried to keep it kind of simple and I did a couple of strong strokes, about eight or so, with a wire brush over most of the balsa wood here to get that extra indented textured look. It is a good idea to wear a cheap dust mask while you're doing this though, because sawdust not so good for your lungs. So first things first, you really don't need to build this exact table. The most important thing is that the table be on 16th of an inch thick and have magnets attached to the bottom in the way that I show here. You could make it out of foam, you could make it out of whatever crafting material you want really and in whatever design you want if you want to do a simpler design. This one's got some nice details on it but you don't have to do that. The most important thing is the thickness and the magnets. That was, that's what's going to allow these little accessories to attach to it quite easily. That said, I'm pretty happy with the design of it and the only pieces of balsa wood that I used to make this were some 16th of an inch thick two inch wide pieces of balsa, which I cut down for the table tops and the side pieces there. If you don't have that, you can easily use quarter inch wide balsa and stick them together. Uh, I also used some one eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch or square um, sticks, which I cut down for the feet and a couple of other bits and bobs. If you need anything for this build, you can find a full list with links on my equipment page linked here. Anything you buy through these Amazon links will give some pennies to support the channel without costing you anything. You'll need a 2 inch by 1 inch piece, 1 16th of an inch thick for the tabletop, or you can glue some planks together to that size. If you use the wider stuff, you'll want to draw in quarter inch planks with a pencil anyway. Once you've got that, put it to one side and cut a 3 quarter inch wide and 3 eighths of an inch tall piece of, again, 1 16th of an inch thick balsa wood, 
or assemble a piece that size from quarter inch planks. I drew a line through the middle so I could keep the middle plank central, and also to make it look like this piece was made up of two thinner planks of wood. This is totally optional, but it does look ever so slightly better. I then grabbed a piece of 1 8 of an inch square balsa wood cut down to 1 and 3 quarter inches long and put it in the centre to draw around. Before cutting that out carefully with an X-Acto knife and checking that the plank fits neatly in. Don't worry if the balsa wood snaps, it can be easily tacky glued back together and laid on a flat surface to keep it straight. If anything, it'll end up tougher. Once you've got that cut out, line up a small coin or button on each side and draw and cut a curve into it. Or you can just freehand it like I do here. Again, if a small bit of balsa snaps off the end, that's fine. It adds an element of damage or imperfection in the builds, which just helps add to the realistic feel. Then I grabbed two more pieces of 1 8 of an inch square balsa, this time cut to 3 quarters of an inch long, and glued one to the bottom in the centre of the plank, nice and straight. I waited for that to dry a little and then placed another one on the top in the same way and laid them down flat against the table to make sure that they were level. Then just rinse and repeat and once you have both, I slid the plank through both of the holes and lined up the two table leg pieces with the bottom of the table. I made it about a quarter of an inch from the edge of each side. Then once that's dry, I cut an eighth of an inch strip of cereal card just over about two inches long and bent it around the table just outside the legs, tacky gluing it in place, first at the top and then underneath once the top was dry. If you're feeling really into the details, you can add some wood pegs either side of the plank underneath by cutting down some cocktail sticks to very small and tacky gluing them in place. It's a bit easier to do with the little blue tack cocktail stick tool that I use quite a lot though. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can use some thinned down Mod Podge here to seal the plank in place. It's easier if you thin it down so it will be drawn away into the gaps. Finally, we need to attach the magnets, of which you can have as many as you want. I went with five for most tables so that I could attach multiple accessories to a single table or put things in various places. You can easily add more later if you want. You want these magnets to face north side up. I made north here match the pole that I used as north in my other builds. If this is your first build, pick a pole. That's now north and you can reference it for any future builds that you make from my designs. I super glued them on the inside of the legs along the plank lines and then put one in the centre. Finally, I added some blobs of Mod Podge to the card strips to look like bolts. Sometimes you'll want to go back to the blob and add a bit more Mod Podge so it's nice and raised up. Painting it was pretty straightforward. I gave it a thin coat of dark brown mixed with a little bit of water to help it get into the cracks and corners. You might need to do another pass or two here to get a solid colour, but it should retain its texture better with a thin coat. I then mixed that dark brown with twice as much tan and got this nice worn wood shade which I dry brushed on. There are also some alternate techniques mentioned later in the video that you can also use for the tables. The metal strips I sealed with a thin layer of Mod Podge and then painted black. I then added a layer of Army Painter Plate Mail Metal over the top and then gave it a thin black wash of dark tone, adding a little bit more around the bolts to give them a bit of definition. The magnets I painted similarly, mainly to make them look intentional. You can use thin strips of balsa wood to hide them by encasing them, but I decided that wasn't really worth the effort. Most of the time these tables are going to be stood upright, and if they ever are laid on their sides, painting them metal makes them look like they're an intentional part of the table's construction. I also made some benches using similar techniques, but these were so straightforward they don't really need a tutorial. They were just a 3 8 of an inch wide strip of balsa, an inch and a half long, with two feet that were slightly smaller and a stabilising beam underneath so they don't snap off. 
These are great and they take less effort to fill space than chairs, are less fiddly and can be used in a few other places too with a bit of creativity. If I was going to make one change to the design of these benches though, it would be to add some heavy feet to the bottom of each of the bench legs. That's easily cut down and added later though. And that's the table. Like I said, really easy to make. And if you did want to make it in a different design, different crafting material, you can absolutely do that. The important thing is the thickness of a 16th of an inch and the magnets underneath. Same thing goes for the accessories. The accessories are all really quite simple to make, but if you want to do it in a different design, if you prefer a different candle design, for example, and you want to use that, the, again, the most important thing is that it have the magnet attached to the bottom, because then it will just be able to attach to this system and work as intended. I'll definitely be adding more to this system in future as well. Extra accessories, extra furniture that you can use these accessories on, all that kind of stuff. So if you've got something in mind that you'd like me to make in particular, maybe mention it in the comments and I'll see if I can slip it into a future video. If you're finding this video useful, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe or even share the video to help me reach more people like you. Anyway, back to the point. I started with the candles. To make a nice base slash candle holder for them to stand on, I took some serial card and drew some circles just bigger than the magnet that I was going to glue on top. I drew around some 4mm magnets, but you can easily draw around the 3mm magnets that we were going to use and then just widen the circle a bit. Once I cut them out, I super glued a 3mm by 2mm magnet, just like the ones that I used in the tables, to the card. I continued the pattern established on the tables of having the north side of the magnet face upwards, which in this case meant the south side was the one I put glue on and stuck to the card. An easy way to keep track of this is to stick your stick of magnets on top of a table before picking them off to glue onto the piece, which makes it easy to see on site which side is north. Once you've got your candle holder, take a cocktail stick and use a pin vise hand drill to drill a small hole in the middle. This is kind of optional, but allows you to more securely add the flame. I then cut the cocktail stick end off at the length that I wanted the candle to be, which in this case was about a quarter of an inch high, and super glued the stick to the magnet upright. To add the flame, I sharpened a cocktail stick to a pinpoint and cut a millimeter or two piece off the end, which cut down then tacky glued nicely into the hole that I drilled. If your piece doesn't quite fit, just trim it a little more. It'll fit sooner or later. Once that dried, all I had left to do was to coat the piece in Mod Podge and paint some Mod Podge dribbles down one side and around the top edge of the candle to look like melted wax. I found that Mod Podge gave me a ton more control here than hot glue would and let me make these candles at a much more realistic scale. If you want easier candles that work with this system and you don't care as much about scale or being a bit messy, you can make some quick easy ones by cutting a plastic q-tip to the right size and pushing a full cocktail stick through until it pokes out of the top, black magic craft style. You should be able to use the same candle holder, though you might need to push the magnet inside the q-tip bottom. I painted these in a bleached white with a copper candle holder to add a bit more colour variety. I also gave the copper candle holder a black wash just to dull it down and give it a bit of weathering. What's also cool is that the flame is so small you'll probably only need to paint it one colour, which means you can quickly dab a different colour on them for one demon summoning scene with green candles and then paint them yellow again later very easily. To start on a wine bottle, I used the table method to make sure that I picked up the magnet the right way around, and then rolled it into a ball of putty about a quarter inch big, making sure the magnet stayed on the surface of one side, with the south pole facing outwards, so it'll stick to the table. Once that was dry, I got a cocktail stick, cut a line around the end, and then cut into it at an angle until the top looked like a cork at the neck of a bottle. Then I just super glued it to the ball and used some thick Mod Podge to smooth over the gap and cover the wood grain. After that dried, I added a rim to the top of the bottle with some more Mod Podge. Painting it is really straightforward. I used Vallejo Black Green and then gave it a coat of gloss varnish mixed with a little bit of water to keep the surface flat for that glassy look. 
I didn't bother painting the cork, it kind of looks perfect already as is. If I was going to make one change, I might have mixed a little more black into the black green and made it just a little bit darker. One of the bottles I also painted Vallejo flat brown, which gave a nice sort of clay pottery look. It could also be worth leaving the very bottom of the bottles unpainted or putting a little matte varnish on there to help prevent it from sticking slightly. It didn't cause problems for me, but it's easily avoided. Finally, I printed out these awesome little labels which I made as a thank you to my patrons. You can download them on my Patreon. You want to print them out at best quality because they are absolutely tiny. I cut some nicks from the edges of them with a knife, gave them a coat of light brown soft tone wash mixed with a bit of water, let them dry and then super glued them to the bottle. The books were a little different because I knew I wanted them to be able to stack horizontally on a shelf without floating. I aimed to always place the top of the magnet a quarter inch from the bottom of the book pages in the centre. I cut the line there and then cut enough space below that for the 2mm magnet that I was using. This ended up working perfectly so you can have your books perfectly lined up or rotate them for a more sort of haphazard look. You can make sure they all line up by always keeping the spine of the book, which is the side where you cut the magnet hole, on your left while you're making them, and always have the magnets pointed north side up. If you don't care about them stacking on bookshelves, you don't need to do this. You could even make only one book like this and then glue three or four others haphazardly on top, but obviously that's a lot less flexible. You can also use 3mm magnets for this, but I preferred the gentle hold of the 2mm magnet and I had some 2mm magnets, so I used 2mm magnets. To make the book, I cut the pages from chipboard in a 3 8 of an inch by a quarter of an inch square. You can wire brush the edges of these for a page-like effect, but I really didn't find it worth it for what of the pages you actually can see. I also cut in the magnet hole, as I mentioned before. You then need a book cover, which needs to be slightly bigger and wrap around. I made mine from serial card, cut to 7 16 of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch. You can easily make larger books just by increasing these measurements. You can also make thicker books by layering chipboard and making the cover bigger, but you probably want to bend the book cover in two places so that it doesn't tear. Once you cut your pages and cover and the hole for the magnet, I superglued the pages to the cover on one side first so it didn't keep sliding around. Then I used the table to make sure that the magnet had landed the right way up, and super glued it in place and closed. Then I just painted the pages a bleached bone off white colour, the covers in varying shades of brown with a few dark colours for variety, and gave the covers a coat of matte varnish to protect them and help them not stick to each other. Finally, making the bread is pretty straightforward too. To start off, I cut some 1 16th of an inch thick balsa wood down to half an inch by 5 eighths of an inch and then cut the corners off. I then used a wire brush to deepen that texture. You want the texture to be reasonably deep here. Once that was done, I put some parchment paper over a steel ruler, placed some 2mm magnets south side down, and made some blobs of putty to cover them, shaping them as ovals and circles, and then used a sculpting tool to push some lines in. You could absolutely use an X-Acto knife for this. In fact, on some of them, I actually did to see how well it would work. It worked pretty well. You might notice here I'm using a different kind of putty than green stuff. This is just brown stuff. It's similar, not quite the same, works very much the same. You could absolutely use green stuff for this. I was just experimenting. I left one of the pieces of bread plain and taller than the others. I had plans for this one. I left them all to cure and then went back to the wooden boards. I painted these in a few colour schemes to add some variety. All of these that you can use on the tables and benches instead of the scheme that I showed earlier if you wanted to. One scheme was a light parchment colour, sort of like bleach bone if you're familiar with old Warhammer colours, which I then gave a light brown wash with some army paint a soft tone. Another was craft paint tan, so slightly more brown than the parchment colour, with a dark brown wash of some army paint a strong tone. I honestly really like the effect these had and they were really easy to do, so I'm considering doing future furniture in this way instead of dry brushing it. Before painting the bread, I added some icing to the top of my unmarked bun using Mod Podge and tried to make it dribble down the sides like a Christmas pudding, 
or a sweet roll from Skyrim. The bread itself I painted in a mix of one part orangey brown to one part yellow brown to two parts tan. This was all in craft paint and gave me a nice colour for the softer underside of the bread. I then did the same mixture with only one part tan and dry brushed the top with it which gave this awesome baked bread look. When it came to attaching them all I did was super glue the bread to the board. Seriously, that, that's it. I hope you got some ideas or inspiration from what I've done here with this system. Modular designs like this, whether it's the walls themselves or the tables or whatever, everything modular is fantastic for terrain for newbies and veterans alike. It saves you time, foam, money and effort. And for newbies who don't have a vast collection, it's actually really flexible as well. So the more people I can kind of introduce to this, the better, I think. Let me know what you like about the build in the comments or what you would change. I absolutely love hearing from you guys after I upload a video. It's one of the best parts of the day. If you enjoy these videos that I work on every week for you guys and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by joining me in the archive on Patreon. You get a couple of things for doing that. You gain early access to new videos and a monthly vote on which projects you would like to see coming up. It's also a good way to see what I'm going to be working on. Most importantly though, you'll be helping me help the community by producing more modular builds, tutorials and all that kind of jazz like this one. Thanks for watching, I'll be back next week with another modular build that you can use in a ton of different ways. But until next time, I'll be in the archive.